standard practices. So it's a great thing that we have uh, this uh, chance for uh, getting uh, getting some new thing we are going to learn now. Uh, so without further delay, with the God Almighty, now I would call Ms. Mrs. Sangeeta, head of the Department of Microbiology, uh, Mahalakshmi Women's of Arts and Science College, to give a welcome address. Welcome, ma'am. Thank you, Pratika. So, a uh, very warm good morning to one and all present here. It's my privilege and pleasure on behalf of Mahalakshmi Women's College of Arts and Science, I welcome you all for this national level webinar on sterilization and its practices conducted by Department of Microbiology of Mahalakshmi Women's College of Arts and Science. I wholeheartedly thank our respected chairman, Therese Kunjidavadam, sir, and our dynamic managing director, Therese K. Thirukumaran, sir, for providing this platform and make us to join in this wonderful session. Thank you, sir. Now, it's my pleasant duty to welcome our beloved principal ma'am, Dr. Mrs. N. Bhuma, who always encourage us in all aspects and shows the right path to travel and grow higher. Welcome, ma'am. I also welcome my vice principal, Mr. S. Ramasamy, sir, to this occasion. Welcome, sir. It's time for me to extend a gracious welcome to our guest speaker of this session, Mr. J. Sanjay Kingeri, Senior Corporate Trainer, Clinical Research Organization, Bangalore. Our guest started his career as microbiologist in VG Research Laboratories, Bangalore, and then as lecturer in PES College in the Department of PG Studies and Research in Microbiology. Then he completed marine, mi marine microbial technology, and also at present he is a senior corporate trainer and has an experience of about 14 years as trainer, especially in clinical research. Welcome you, sir. We are very glad to have you in this session, sir. Thank you so much, sir. I once again welcome you all for this interesting session. Thank you. Thanks, ma'am. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all doing good. Excuse me, sir. So, Kritika, yeah. we just call principal ma'am to share a few words to start the session. No issues. Let him start. We'll do it at the end also. No issues. Please go ahead. Sorry to interrupt, sir. You can proceed, sir. We'll talk later. Please go ahead, ma'am. Yes. Uh, I, good morning, everyone. I congratulate the Department of uh, Microbiology for wonderfully organizing. On row, they have been organizing continuously so many webinars, and which is of very much help. Uh, no, I mean, it uh, helps not only to the students and also to everyone in and around the, I mean, community because uh, the world has become very vast and wide now. And, uh, sir, uh, I would like to personally thank you. The way in which you were giving a warm smile, right, really, it uh, means a lot to us. I know definitely the uh, session is going to be very interesting. And thank you so much, Mr. Sanjay, sir, for your warmth, which you are just extending to all of us. Looking forward for you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now we hand over the session to our dynamic resource person, Mr. Sanjay Kengeri, to start the session, sir. Thank you so much, Kritika. Uh, warm welcome to all of you. Uh, glad to be with all of you this morning. Uh, hope all of you are doing good and staying safe at this a uh, very crucial time, especially for Chennai and Mumbai. So, yep, as already mentioned by Sangeeta Ma'am and Kritika, I'm going to speak to you all about sterilization and its practices. So, I have a very first question to all of you. Where do we see sterilization practiced? answer that for me and good news is I'm not going to use any PowerPoint presentations during the session today and it's just going to be a very discussion mode okay so I would really expect a response when I ask a question so where do we all see sterilizations practiced certainly it's going to be practiced and all the food and beverages industry, pharmaceutical industries, 
hospital industries and so very much certain at our laboratories okay and just to let you know in advance the definition of sterilization differs from our laboratory to that of the industrial standards okay so sterilization as you all know it's a process where all forms of microorganisms are killed or permanently inactivated and I promise you I'm going to stop all sort of definitions today after this okay so sterilization process you know roots back to 18th century as per our records in microbiology texts early 18th century we had Robert Koch using both the steam and dry heat sterilization and late 1870s Charles you know Chamberlain invented autoclave he was one of the people for Louis Pasteur okay and from then till date we are very much making use of autoclaves okay one great information which is left out in our microbiology text I just want to remind you all our ancient Indian history Sushrutas Samitas very clearly detail about the aseptic techniques which were practiced during plastic surgery by father of plastic surgeon that's a Sushruta it is a quite you know unpleasant thing we don't have those things recorded in our microbiology text till today okay sterilization can be achieved either by physical or chemical methods and do you all know the natural way of sterilization can anybody answer me that you can unmute yourself and do that it is sunlight it's by sun drying that gives you know men very good sterilized uh, uh, product for us say so it should be a transparent one though okay any dust particle also will prevent sterilization beneath that okay now let me go with the heat sterilization discussion first heat sterilization can be broadly classified into moist heat or the steam heat sterilization and then the dry heat so moist heat sterilization over almost like 1500 years now uh, sorry 150 years now uh, we have steam heat practice for sterilization processes almost all the industries that is food and uh, drug industries pharma industries everywhere for the big broilers or the fermenters the steam is used to sterilize the fermenters or the boilers where we use them for the production apart from that we have steam used for sterilization with pressure okay so to raise the temperature above 100 degrees it's not possible in the atmospheric pressure to go above 100 degrees so it's very important to increase the pressure along with the temperature so the temperature goes really high and that is what is practiced in our autoclaves and autoclave uses the same principle as our pressure cooker in the kitchen simple it actually kills the protein and coagulates it thereby causing the cell death in the autoclave okay or the steam under pressure so we have different phases of sterilization process happening in the autoclave first thing is purge phase where the atmospheric air is let loose or let go and it will be replaced by the steam and moreover in the exposure phase there will be a lot of pressure 
okay up to like 15 pounds pressure and that will allow the temperature raise to 121 degrees and it will be maintained it should be maintained at least for 25 to 30 minutes for effective sterilization to occur and they, then we need to go for the exhaust phase to let the temperature cool and allowing the pressure to settle as well before we open up the autoclave and recent discoveries have been in place for autoclave so there are different types of autoclaves available in the market today you know the benchtop ones bsl3 autoclaves they are really really big and high capacity autoclaves double door autoclaves as good as your refrigerators at home with two doors okay we have all that but before we use autoclave what is that we need to do we need to actually prepare our medias which we are going to sterilize for a laboratory or any glasswares even simple forceps or you know tongue of scissors whatever we need all that need to be cleaned dried air dried and then it should be packed in preferably a brown paper and then packed in the autoclave leaving space for steam circulation and that would allow active sterilization and how are we supposed to handle the sterilized material after the sterilization process simple we open up this you know autoclave and after everything is cooled we get the instruments or the media as whatever of the autoclave onto the working table and prior to get those things done the working table should be sterilized as well maybe we can use a chemical mode of sterilization alcohol available alcohol in the laboratory and with that i would like to take you to the other steam sterilization techniques we use in today's world tindalization as we all know there will be cycles of boiling the content it could be a media or any liquid substances for nearly 100 degrees and let that content in, uh, incubated for a day's time which would allow the germination of spores so what happens during the normal atmospheric pressure the boiling would actually kill only the vegetative cells not the spores so we allow that spore cells to spores to germinate as germinal cells then those can be boiled on a subsequent day and this cycle repeats for two to three times usually three times and that will be considered or that can be considered as a sterile content when i speak about tindalization i also want to let you know about pasteurization please note pasteurization is not 100 percent sterilized it doesn't give 100 percent sterilized product okay so pasteurization is basically to raise the temperature just below the 100 degrees and cooling it thereby we don't spoil the milk or the milk product or even the food industries where juices are prepared there they use this pasteurization technique and pasteurization technique is just to minimize the germinal, germinal cells and of course to remove any uh, undue protein particles okay which would contaminate or, or spoil the food in a due course of time so that way it only prevents or reduces the contamination when it is stored so pasteurized products has to be you know taken into the refrigeration until it is used okay it can't be kept in room temperature 
that's a care we need to take. So now let's discuss about dry heat sterilization. Dry heat sterilization, first of all, we know the flame, okay? Uh, that's very auspicious for we Indians. Uh, anything given to the fire guard, it takes in, okay? So that's basic principle we use in sterilization as well. So dry, when I say dry heat, first thing comes to everybody's mind, especially in life sciences departments, including microbiology, is hot air oven. So hot air oven, we can have all the glasswares and the stainless steel instruments, which we use in the laboratory for our work, day-to-day -day work, all cleaned, air dried, and packed with paper. Am I correct? Packing with paper as preparation for sterilizing in hot air oven. Am I correct? We should not be packing it with paper because we raise the temperature very much higher than 100 degrees and that can lead to catch fire. And there was one small accident in my junior's lab while I was in my graduation. Okay, never pack, okay? Your preparation for hot air oven sterilization for all your glass wares or the stainless steel wares is just to clean and air dry. And then you can all place them in the racks and after loading you can lock the sterilized I mean, lock the hot air oven and raise the temperature for anywhere more than 160 degrees and leave that for two hours okay and you need to let the oven cool before you bring the instruments out of it okay so remember while you unload those instruments, glassware or the stainless steel, you may have to use the thermal glasses. Okay, that's very essential. Otherwise, there might be minor incidents where you would hurt yourself. Take care of that. So that's about outer oven. If at all, there's also an option you could go and heat uh, the instruments in outer oven for. Uh, nearly 190 degrees centigrade for very few minutes like six to ten minutes that will sterilize it and anyways you need to give time for the uh, instrument to cool down for you to bring or, or unload all the uh, laboratory instruments to get onto your working table flaming we all use that day in and out when we are in the microbiology lab especially to transfer the inoculation or transfer the culture from one plate to another inoculation plate, we use inoculation loops, okay, which is usually made up of tungsten, which was supposed to be in platinum, which is very costly, that can't happen though. And we reheat that for red hotness before we, and before we go and transfer any culture. Okay, any questions? I have somebody ra raising their hand. And we can hold the questions if you don't have now until the end, maybe. Okay. So, in the hospital setups, we have uh, incinerations, which is basically to burn anything to ash. Okay. All the you know hospital ways are treated this way. That's basically killing. Okay. Before it is you know exposed off. And apart from that, I also want to tell in the hospital setups, we usually find the needleizers, okay? So, which is FDA, US uh, approved uh, needleizers. They raise temperature uh, more than 1,500 degrees centigrade. That can uh, allow the needles reduced to swaft. 
We earlier used, not in India for sure, to my knowledge, uh, but still it's in use in some of the European countries till date. There's a glass bead sterilizer. It's a surface sterilizer. The glass beads will be basically heated for more than 250 degrees centigrade. And that will allow, uh, you know, dousing off the instruments into the glass bead uh, for having the surface sterilization done for any instruments. And this is, uh, this was widely used in the dental cares, or the dental hospitals. And please note that this is not the technique or, or the procedure which is approved by the FDA US government. Okay. That, you know, brings us to the end of heat sterilization. Now let's go discuss about radiation. So when it is about radiation, uh, I just need to tell that the radiations can be non-ionizing radiation, which is just a UV rays, okay, and that is very much available in our sun rays as well. And Robert Koch in early 18th, 18th century, he had proved that with the non-ionizing radiation, when mycobacterium tuberculosis is exposed, it is killed. Okay. So we can still use those things. We use UV lamps in our laboratory to you know, sterilize our working tables in the laminar rate flow to clean the working tables and so on. Okay. So apart from the ionizing radiations, we also have, I mean, non apart from non-ionizing, we also have the ionizing radiations. Usually the gamma rays are used for you know, the disposable material as medical waste. Uh, so when I say that, you can understand where exactly it is used very much, okay? And this radiation basically will be lethal by inducing a damage to the genetic material in the microorganisms. And that brings the chemical change in the microorganism. Okay. So the genetic material damage will lead to the loss of genetic information and which will in turn cause a cell death. Okay. That's very effective. But when we are using ionizing radiations, utmost care need to be taken. And even the non-ionizing radiations, the UV lamps, I would recommend you all to you know, stay away from the UV lamp. Don't expose yourself, not look at it, okay? That might damage our retina or the skin cells. The genetic, material, genetic makeup of the cells can be damaged or, or impaired. Just take care of those things. So that's about the radiations I had to speak to you about. And now, let me speak to you on the development of these radiations. We have the electronic beam instruments uh, developed, which are used as an on-off technology, which will provide very higher dose of radiation than the gamma rays. So very less time is sufficient for sterilizing any required instruments or the material. We also have much developed uh, pulsed light technology which can be utilized as a very at a very high voltage xenon lamps will emit a very broad spectrum rays which includes UV rays till to infrared rays and it's very effective but very dangerous as well to handle we may have to be very cautious in handling those instruments if at all we are and this would be sufficient to use only for few hundred microseconds okay 
that's all about radiation has to speak and now let me speak to you all about filtration that's the last type i'm going to speak to you under the physical methods of sterilization for filtration uh, this will not kill any microorganisms it will just remove or separate the microorganisms or the biological contents or contaminants from the filters we use uh, any thermal resistance or, or sorry thermal sensitive medias could be sterilized using this technique so any medias which are sensitive to temperature or pressure can be used using the filters and the normal filters can filter uh, have the range of filters the dimension of the filters range from 2 microns to 0.25 microns the normal ranges okay and we have the micro filters where the pore size would range from 0.22 uh, microns to 0 to 2 microns and we also have the nano filter available in the market which will you know sterilize or filter the content and the port size there would be like 20 to 50 uh, nanometers okay and i think uh, we have kritika as nanotechnologist in the session as well she can give more details about that later to you so when i speak about the filters i also want to let you know the filter has how the filters have been made the material used for creating the filters are usually nylon cellulose acetate uh, or polyester sulfone usually these contents and they are very sensitive and usually they can't be reused okay unless otherwise they are very high quality when i speak about radiation and filters i also want to speak about laminar airflow i know you would have used that but let's discuss about the best practices when it comes to sterilization we get all our medias and the instruments sterilized in the autoclave or the otter oven and before we get all that sterilized contents onto our working table on laminar airflow we need to prepare the laminar airflow before you switch on the laminar airflow it's recommended that you cleanse the desk and the side glasses and the shield glass with chemical sterilizer usually the available alcohol in the laboratory and then close the laminar airflow working table switch on the uv lamp for at least 20 to 30 minutes and switch it off and then you come in near to the laminar airflow and as and when you open up the laminar airflow work table you're supposed to switch on the flow okay so that will actually reduce a lot of contamination when i speak about the sterilization i know it's a very basic techniques or the methods we are required to use in life sciences preferably in microbiology and biotechnology departments but the seriousness is too big especially for people who work in molecular biology labs will understand how important this is going to be washing the hands with a sanitizer or, or scrubbing the hand with a sanitizer or washing the hands using the soap and lot of water even after that you rinse your hand for nearly 12 to 13 times you can still find the soap content in the wash ok 
okay and when we work on molecular biology this is the extent we need to really take care of all the contaminants it's not just the living microorganisms to be killed it's also a minute chemical component need to be removed and that's also accounts to our sterilization and when we practice it hope that makes sense to everybody so I just want to now discuss about chemical methods of sterilization. When we speak about chemical methods of sterilization, heads up to all of you, please note that any chemical content we use that will re leave residues, which is undetectable. Okay, so. For me, I always prefer physical mode of sterilization, okay? Hardly I use chemical mode, okay? So when we say chemical sterilizers, we can use the liquids or the gaseous forms, okay? So when it is gaseous forms, it is ethylene oxide, okay? And the contents which need to be sterilized has to be exposed not less than 10 to 12 hours for 100% sterilization to be achieved. Okay. And formaldehyde, okay. we use that most of the time for fumigating our labs during the weekends. Okay. And nitrogen oxide, ozone, that's very effective as well, the ozone, because the ozone, it is very inactive in its form. So it oxidizes things very easily at a faster rate. Okay. The liquid forms of chemical sterilizers includes hydrogen peroxide, which is very well known, aldehydes, and hypochlorides. More gaseous uh, sterilizing agents could be the chlorine dioxide, chlorine itself, and nitrogen can be used. And remember, all these leaves residues aside, okay, which can be a contaminant for our work. Okay, our lab works. It can be broadly classified into two. One is learners and the other one is researchers researchers really can't escape of all these things okay if they are not if the researchers are not good handed <laughs> then they can expect all amazing results after the sterilization techniques are being practiced okay especially with the molecular biology labs okay all all wonderful results okay except for the accepted ones okay i Hope you got it. <laughs> we won't get the expected results at all, okay? Until we take very minute uh, uh, intention of getting the sterilization done. So now I've spoken about both physical and chemical mode of sterilization. I just want to let you know recent discoveries. Okay. We had all these things in 1990s as well, but it's more uh, in use for the last few years now. Okay. So that is physiochemical method. Okay. That is via the plasma technology. We all know that plasma is a fourth state of matter along with you know, solid, liquid and gaseous states. Okay. So at a very high temperature or a low temperature and in presence of strong magnetic field with a very little or minimal chemicals used, we can create plasma of that liquid and just half an hour to 45 minutes of sterilization would be sufficient to sterilize the requirements for us. There are different stages again there, okay? First of all, the chamber has to be vacuumized 
and there should be an injection of the chemical. Usually it is hydrogen peroxide. And that will actually diffuse into plasma. That's the next stage. And the diffused plasma will actually produce ions which are very inactive and it will have a frequency of radioactive elements. Okay, so it's very active way of stabilizing the instruments or, or whatever. Okay, and finally the cycle will end with a vent. Okay, that is our plasma stabilization technique. Okay. So, any questions so far? Any questions so far? Okay, okay. So, we'll go back to the questions I asked you at the start of this session. Where all do we use stabilization practices? Okay, we'll see what techniques of stabilizations are used in each of these industries, and of course, we'll come back to our laboratory conditions after that. What are the techniques used in the food and beverage industries? Okay, usually the heat treatment. Okay, I forgot to tell you about the heat treatment. Uh, that is the ultra high temperature techniques. Okay, raising the temperature more than 140 degrees centigrade for a few minutes. Okay, that is used. And tindalization for sure, pasteurization are all used. Sometimes, very few times, we get to see that ethylene oxide is used for stabilizing the food and the containers, the plastic containers or the glasswares used to pack the foods. When it comes to pharmaceutical industries, certainly thermal stabilization, filtration a lot of times used and radiations as well. And pharma companies use chemical stabilization a lot of times. When it comes to the hospital industries, the MNC hospitals okay, are using all the stabilization techniques we discussed in the class today, which includes the thermal, st thermal stabilization, both the dry heat and the steam heat, radiations plasma technology and of course the chemical sterilization modes. Now all these are required at the laboratory setup also in the industrial setups to maintain the quality. And how do we check for the quality? Certainly quality checks. In the research laboratories or the college laboratories, the guides or the teaching faculties will be doing these quality check in a scheduled phases, once a week, once a month or twice a month or so, which includes the fumigation to remove all the contaminants from the laboratory. Okay. So, I just want to let you know, when I was in my first year graduation, we did fumigation for the first time. That's what our professor told us to fumigate on a Saturday before we left the lab. And very clear instructions were given. It was very nice of him. Okay. Uh, he was a doctor from Benares University was teaching me. Okay. He gave us all very good instructions as to how the fumigation has to be done for the laboratory. Okay. Unfortunately, my professor did not tell that 
there should not be any living cultures inside the lab and we had all the living cultures in the lab and we fumigated and we killed all of them successfully that was a great loss for the lab that year okay please take care your practices okay during your practices what you do is more important there's no harm in making a note of what you need to do before you practice that okay that's a very good practice i would say first make a thought pen it down and do whatever you're doing and you can tick off what you have completed that way you don't deviate from what you're not supposed to do and you'll be doing the right thing the first time itself now apart from the laboratory conditions and apart from the hospitals and apart from the industrial setups how much of sterilization techniques are required is a very great question especially during the pandemic time i'm sure your first few lectures in your graduation school would have covered normal flora of microorganism in the human system okay and we know how important that normal flora is and our body is not at all sterile not at all sterile because we have all those microorganisms getting colonized on ourselves or within from the time we are taken birth and they are very very useful to us believe me if at all we don't have the normal flora appropriately that can cause lot of problem for us simple skin diseases okay which will be which will make you a 100% client or a customer for a dermatologist forever okay so the normal flora can get changed due to circumstances let me give an example when we are hospitalized for a longer duration why is the auto antibiotics changed simple not that the disease is gone intensive not really it is because due to the cleanliness maintained in the hospitals there'll be a change in normal flora in our system and to avoid any cross infection or the hospital acquired infections we will have the antibiotics changed after usually the fourth or fifth day i also want to remind you all at this time when you are prescribed with an antibiotic make sure your physician is prescribing you multivitamins because antibiotics can put your immune system low which would allow you after the antibiotic you know i mean uh, activity is done in your system when it's once it's all washed off you will be more prone prone for infection to avoid that you need to be better immunized so speak to your physician to have multivitamins prescribed along with your antibiotics okay so how is that we are required to practice wearing the gloves if required in the laboratory especially when we are using uh you know I mean the live specimens from say for example the blood or urine samples which are really to be handled sensitive so only those cases we may have to use our gloves or i would recommend bare hands would give better results in the microbiology lab or molecular biology lab okay so with a quick 
and a small demonstration, I would end this session. And I would open up that for any questions for me. Okay? So, remember, sterilization would kill the normal flora. Okay? So, avoid that. Okay, I'm sterilizing my hand here to give a demonstration. Okay? I usually don't wear the watches. Okay? And in the microbiology labs, rings, watches, not allowed. That might possibly cause a lot of contamination. Okay? I sterilize my hand with a chemical agent and I have the sterilized pair of scissors to show you how to wear the gloves correctly. Okay, here. Okay. After having the hand sterilized, you can open up the gloves, surgical gloves possibly, and here you go. This is how exactly it is packed. Okay, and you just need to put in your hands and pull out this to the other side. And make sure your fingertips are to the end of your glove. There you go. Okay. Let me do with that on the other hand. Here I go. I just want to show these couple of things today. Apart from this, I'm going to show you how you can wear your facial marks when required, not all the time. Okay. Because we have a lot of media telling you need to wear the mask when you're coming out. Yes, that's very important because we don't trouble others or we don't get trouble back to our home. Okay. So this is how we wear our gloves. And after our work is done, Immediately, you will have to dispose that off into the bin. Okay, I have the bin here, right in here. Okay, and assuming that our work are done, I'm going to pinch the second glove. This is my second glove. Okay, bring that here to the wrist. Or onto my palm and then I go and wind this off this way okay and bin it and I've already pinched it up so from there I'm not holding the external part in the internal part and then pull it off Okay, that's the correct way or practicing using the glove. Okay, and we need to wash our hands. Just because I'm mid of the session, I'm going to have a chemical sterilizer used. Okay, and now let me demonstrate to you wearing the facial mask. So I have a facial mask here. I'm going to cut open the packet and I need to really look out for the string. Okay? I'm not touching the mask anywhere. Okay? And I, I would recommend not to buy any mask when it is in open. Okay? If it is opened. Okay? I see the chemist giving the mask holding it like this, as though I give my towel to my mom in the morning for a bath. No, that's not the way we practice. It's no use wearing such mask at all. Okay, I, I hold the string and pull it out. Okay, 
and believe me no masks can filter your virus okay very specialized masks okay viral filter masks are there but the regularly available mask no such mask can filter your virus okay that's just a another way to avoid any infection i'm holding the string the first string i'm going to put across my ears and bring this to my nose okay avoid touching the mask and put that onto the other side and only at the top of the mask i have the aluminium rim get that and pinch it onto your nose bridge and if you need you can pull out the mask to the bottom of your chin and it's fully covered now and i don't think i need to bring my mask down every time i want to speak we usually see that everywhere across when people want to speak while they are wearing the mask they bring that down below the mouth which is really not useful it's it's you know better not using the mask in that case okay from the time we open up the mask from the pouch till it's bent we're not supposed to touch the mask part okay that's the best practice everybody in every media we have people saying wear mask while we are coming out but nobody is taking an attempt to tell how exactly it need to be used and instead of not using it properly it's better we don't use it and at least as life science professionals from the department of microbiology i think we need to take the first step to tell and advise these instructions for people around us okay now let me show you how to dispose it off and any mask for that matter can't be reused okay it can't be reused it should not be sterilized and reused at all it's not worth okay remove it from the string across your ears okay and bend it and wash your hands that's a proper practice now i would open the session for questions if there are any any questions at all hello yeah hello yes ma'am sir i'm audible Yes, ma'am. You are. Sir, this is Satya Rama Devi Naupada, from ah. the uh, working as an assistant professor from the Department of Microbiology, uh -huh. Maharaja's Postgraduate College, Vijayanagaram, sir. Uh huh. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you, sir, for the wonderful session, because uh, basically we know all these sterilization techniques. We daily practice in our home too, because without sterilization, it won't be possible. Because we are living in the microbial world. Yeah. So they are allowing us to live in their world. <laughs> very, very, very great words, ma'am. Thank you so much for understanding Mother Nature so well. So uh, we have to instead of killing the harm, healthy bacteria, we have to maintain the condition. So we accept that. But uh, recently, uh, it's a burning topic: coronavirus, COVID nineteen, which is a burning topic. We know that viruses are obligate intracellular parasites, right? Yes. So without host cell, they cannot live for a long period. Mm -hmm. But uh, this uh, coronavirus, the studies says that it can retain up to twenty four hours on cardboards, two to three days on plastics and stainless steel. How is it possible? Uh, Ma'am, basically, when you understand the chemistry of virus, that's uh, the genetic material coated with a protein. and these retroviruses those are rna viruses have a capsid on it that's the that's a bad part that's actually not allowing the protein to dry off quickly and that's how they are retained or 
staying active as chemical components until they enter into the host cell. Sir, how it varies? So based on the material, uh, how would they change their uh, dormancy period? Uh, I mean you, period. Metals, metals, uh, metals have the absorption capacity, but not the cardboard or any organic material. Okay. Mother Nature has made all the organic materials so nice, they give themselves to others. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the cardboard is, of course, a lot of cellulose in it. So it gives the water molecules to the virus cell, virus particle, sorry. Okay. Will, and all, the RNA, will all the RNA viruses will be the same? Uh, not really. And, and not all the retroviruses are studied so well so far. Because we have very few in number, <laughs> and because uh, this may happen if uh, this coronavirus may exist or survive in the cardboard, even HIV can also survive. But we are telling that HIV cannot survive outside for a longer period. But you know the time might vary. That's it. Yeah, the, that's what. The time might vary. Okay, sir. Thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you for your wonderful session. Yeah. And I congratulate uh, the organizers too for organizing such a lovely seminar, especially in our field. Because now people will come to know about microbiology. The existence of microbiology will come to know now when such cases will happen. Because we daily, whatever may be the subject, each and every subject has their own role. But especially microbiology is ever booming topic because every day we used to emerge uh, every day due to uh, pollution and due to environmental factors man-made resources we are emerging with a new viruses yes. so it's a it's a continuous study microbiology is a continuous study where it's a never-ending process yeah so people should uh, learn more techniques of self awareness self-sterilization but don't go for uh, i suggest through this seminar that don't go for too much too uh, much sterilization is also harmful to health absolutely. because as you said normal flora will be disturbed if it disturbs we many opportunistic um, uh, infections will contact us mm -hmm. because they are always opportunistic they, they will take an opportunity absolutely so, uh, during this COVID positions, I suggest through these seminars, okay, sterilization is important, but don't go with too much of sanitizers. It will also spoil our intestine too. Yes. Uh, as Ma'am says, uh, yes, sterilization need to be minimal in the outside world, in the normal world rather, okay? Only in the laboratories and in the industry setups, we may have to be uh, doing the practices and in the outside world when you step out of the house certainly when you get back home in our previous generation when they step out and come into the home they used to take a shower and we do even these days but we do a little bit relaxed we say okay let me have a coffee and then go have a shower okay that having coffee and going to the shower it's sufficient for any virus particle like what we are facing today to get spread across. Yes. Okay. So step out, I would recommend you take a shower. Okay. When you're at home, I would not recommend you to wash any hands with soaps or anything very frequently. No, don't disturb your normal flora. Nor you don't have to wear your masks. Okay. Just for the demonstration, I, I bought this mask to the session today. Okay, I usually wear my handkerchief across my nose and mouth when I'm going out to buy groceries or vegetables. Okay, even that is sufficient. As I told you, any of these masks will not filter the virus at all. As good as my handkerchief, simple. And that's much cleaner. And it has my own, you know, normal floor on it, which saves me much better than the sterilized, you know, men mask. Hope you all agree with me. Yes, sir. Yes, of course. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're welcome, ma'am. Any other questions? Uh, good morning, sir. Hi, good morning, dear. Uh, sir, I'm from DG Western College and I'm far away from this microbiology department. <clears throat> Sir, I'm far away from this microbiology department. Uh, I have no microbiology at all. Along the microbiology world. 
please go ahead yeah so thank you sir sir how far it helps a normal person uh, washing this uh, vegetables in turmeric water or neem water uh, is it a kind of sterilization yeah, are we required to do that uh, i would say yes because the vegetable market is crowded anywhere anywhere under the sun not just here in india so when we have places things coming from the crowded places i think it need to be sanitized okay i would i would expose that to the sun in my balcony for a couple of hours and then bring it in okay and then once i bring it in if it is in the polythene bags i leave them on the floor in a corner of the hall for almost a day or two and then stack them in their places okay if it comes when it comes to the vegetables especially the greeny vegetables we need to soak them in the salt water at least for a couple of hours okay and of course turmeric also we know that it's antiseptic okay that's really good one thanks for bringing that point and sorry sir i have one more question anyhow we are going to cook the vegetables uh, at a high degree uh, celsius uh, will it not kill the virus on it sir wonderful question i love this question can i know your name please i am prashant from dg vaishnav college sir oh you are you are a teaching faculty in dg vaishnav wonderful. yes sir uh, doctor uh, good to tell i mean i'm i'm happy to tell this to you uh, when we are handling the product okay you would have noticed you would have noticed me at least couple of times my hand moved towards my ears and nose okay i mean to say hands are our enemies during the pandemic time okay hands are our enemies believe me and however clean you keep them i happen to touch something my laptop at the moment my earbud okay my nose it's my nose i have my independence to touch my nose i have my independence to scrub my ear eyes okay when we are doing that along with the work kitchen work when things are coming from the marketplace if it is not sanitized properly before we use it on the working table in the kitchen that can possibly spread across in the entire home hope that answer your question yeah thank you sir thank you you're welcome any other questions okay if no questions oh is there any question okay if no questions uh my thank you to everybody for being such a wonderful participants in the session and my special thanks to uh the college staff and the principal ma'am thank you all so much thank you sir really it is a wonderful session sir so informative i think so all the participants have earned uh, some knowledge about that is during this covid period it is such an important thing to know about the sterilization so uh, i think uh, all the participant has gained much knowledge about sterilization in this session sir thank you so much thank you so much sir you're welcome ma'am nothing more than what you all impart the knowledge in the department i did today i was just retrading on what you all thought there sure sir but it is a completely a refreshing one for the, all the thing all the participants i think so sir really informative sir thank you ma'am thank you the way you have explained this uh, really it is uh, much impressed by all of us sir thank really, you thank you so much sir thank you ma'am have a great day please all of you take care and stay home stay safe thank you ma'am thank you sir